dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Marie McDonald in The Most Enchanted, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week Hollywood's most brilliant performers join us to entertain you. One of the screen's most beautiful actresses, Marie McDonald, is our star. Marie portrays a popular Broadway actress whose doctor has told her she has just one year to live. Here is a gripping realism, tragedy, and deep romance. One lives through the conflicting mental processes that guide her decisions, a race always against the inevitable reaper awaiting his advantage. Our curtain for Act One in a moment, but first... Wendell Niles. Your regular Army and U.S. Air Force are an assurance, an assurance that our country is ready and able to maintain the peace. And more than that, your young men in service are securing their own future as well as that of their country. Your soldiers and airmen are engaged in one of the finest of careers, a career with a future. They are benefiting themselves through the many advantages available to a young man in the Army and Air Force today. And now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's act one of The Most Enchanted, starring Marie McDonald as Gail Saunders. Our scene, a doctor's office. Across the desk from Dr. John Snyder sits lovely Gail Saunders, the first lady of the American stage. She has just been told a very tragic truth. That's all, Gail. I'm sorry, John. It takes a little time to realize the enormity of what you've just told me. A year to live. It takes a little time to realize just what that means. Have a cigarette. Surely. Thanks. 365 days. You know, I smoke on the average of 12 cigarettes a day. Now, how many more will I have, Doctor? I'm not very good at figures. Gail. I'm not being melodramatic. Don't misunderstand me. I'm only budgeting my last days. Gail, believe me, the best thing is not to think of it. Go on living just as you have been. Living. <laughs> That's just it. That's what's so ironic. I haven't been living at all. I've been saving up to the time when I could live, as I've always dreamed of living. But I wanted something else first. I wanted security. As if anyone ever had that, Gail. Oh, if you've got enough money, you That could... doesn't always represent security. You should know that. John, you were never poor like my folks were. You never knew what it was to be without food enough to eat, to be cold in winter and almost die of the heat in summer. But I saw it. That's the way I was born and the way I lived till I got out on my own. When I finally got started, I made a vow that I'd never be poor again as long as I lived. You never told me this before. I never told anybody. I'm only telling you because I've got to make you see why I've got to get everything I can from this... this last year. I understand. Poor girl like I was. It was only one way to get rich, the stage. I've worked hard, Dr. Snyder. I've given up everything else for one ambition. I wanted to make enough money to be able to live. But your work is living, Gail. My work? Actually, I hate every part of this life. I've only endured it because I was headed for a goal. Gail, it's been my experience that most people live the kind of life they really want. They may envy others. But if they were to be transplanted into that other life that seems so good to them, they'd be more unhappy than they are. 
It isn't true of me. I know that, John. Next year, I was planning to retire. I'm still very young, and I thought I had a whole lifetime before me. And now I know I've only a year. <laughs> what am I to do, John? Do what you plan to do. Retire, go away, wherever you want. Take your year. Make of it what you can. I don't know where to go. Uh, there's a little town I used to know in West Virginia. It's called Meadville. It's just the place for you. All right. I'll try it. My play closes next week. I'll tell the manager I'm leaving. Thank you, doctor, for being honest. Gail, are you crazy? Well, no more than usual. Why, Jed? Well, this ridiculous decision of yours to retire from the stage. Oh, Jed, let's not talk anymore. Let's just enjoy the party. It'll be the last party I'll ever have. What do you mean? Well, nobody gives parties for retired stars. Come on, let's have fun. Someday I'll explain why I'm doing this. Well, okay, I'll take your word for it. Oh, hello, Jed. I'm looking all over for you. Oh, hello, Matt. I'm afraid I sort of deserted you. Gail, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Matt Carpenter. How do you do? I'm very glad to meet you, Miss Holmes. Matt's new to New York, Gail. Hey, Jed, come here a minute. Somebody I want you to meet. Oh, excuse me, Gail. Be nice to Matt. He's a stranger here. <laughs> Is this your first trip to New York? Uh, yes, I had to come up on a case. A case? I'm a lawyer. Well, I guess I should say I hope to be one. <laughs> I've only had my shingle out six months. Your career must be something like mine. You have to learn all the tricks before you're a full-fledged performer. <laughs> Something like that. After all, I suppose a lawyer is part actor, too. Why, yes. He has to sell himself to a jury as much as I do to an audience. <laughs> That's what's going to be hard for me. I, I never was much of an actor. Oh, I'll have to give you lessons, then. Well, any and all advice gratefully received. Uh, what's your fee? Oh, let me see. I'm an expensive teacher, you know. That goes without saying. My first divorce case, free of charge. <laughs> That's a deal. Well, that's putting payment up conveniently in the future, or are you secretly married? No. I've never been hit over the head with a Hawaiian moon. <laughs> There's the music. Do you dance, Mr. Carpenter? Yes, I'd like to very much. I wanted to ask you before, but you know, it's your partner. I, I, I thought there'd be lots of others you'd rather dance with. Well, right now, there's no one I'd rather dance with than you, Mr. Carpenter. You think you could stand another dance? I'd love it. Hey, do you mind if I cut in, sir? I've been trying to say a few words to this young lady all evening. Oh, Dr. Snyder, I'm so glad you could make it. Dr. Snyder, Mr. Carpenter. Oh, how do you do, oh, sir? Yeah. I'm afraid I have been monopolizing. Mr. Carpenter, I'd like some champagne. Would you get me a glass? Oh, certainly. I'll be right back. Well, well. Oh, He's just a friend of Jed. He's new to New York. I'm trying to put him at his ease. Offhand, I'd say you're enjoying the job. <laughs> I am, John. I haven't enjoyed anything so much in a long time. You know, it's funny about knowing something for sure. It's a relief. It's the same way I feel when the curtain finally goes up on a new show. I know I've got two hours and a half to do my best in. And after that, it's all over. The show's either a hit or a flop, but my work's done. That's the way I want you to feel, Gail. And that's why I told you the truth, because I was sure you'd take it that way. I I've made all the arrangements. I've bought a house in Meadville. I'm leaving next week. You'll come and visit me. <laughs> I certainly will. I haven't been back there for many years. I'd love seeing the town again. Oh, good. But that young man, that Mr. Carpenter you met, He's very nice. John, what... What if I should fall in love? I've thought of that. Don't do it, Gail. It wouldn't be fair to the man. You can see that. Yes. Yes, I can see that. You're not in love with this carpenter boy, are you? Oh, no, of course not. I, why, I only just met him tonight. After the party, I'll never see him again. Oh... Maybe once or twice before I go. But when I leave New York, I'll leave everything behind, even him. That's the way it should be. 
Now, here's your young man and your champagne. Have fun, Gail. I'm going to, Dr. Snyder. You know, I've got my cigarettes down to six a day. It makes me feel as if I had so many more to go. At the end, I'll smoke them all at once, package after package. Oh, Hudson's a beautiful river, isn't it? Beautiful. Gail. Oh, Matt, please. Just let's sit and look at the water. There's something I've got to say. I love you. Matt. I know you don't love me. I know you couldn't. I'm a fool to hope that you might. Matt, Matt, please. Oh, it's all right. I'm going away tomorrow. Maybe I'll never be back. I've just got to say that this last week's been the most wonderful I've ever known. It's been, well, almost enchanted. I'll never forget it, Gail. I'll never forget you. Matt. Matt, please don't talk like that. Take me home, Matt. Please take me home. Gail, you're crying. Gail, it, it couldn't be true. You couldn't love me as I love you. Oh, say it. Say it. Matt. Oh, Matt, darling. You do. You do. Matt, take me home. <laughs> You love me, and I know now that you do. Why does it have to be goodbye? You said yourself that you had your life back where you come from, and I've my life here. But your life isn't here any longer, Gail. Oh, I don't know whether I could make you happy or not, but I could try if you'd only give me the chance. Well, I can't explain that. But the whole thing's been settled for us. It's got to be goodbye. All right, so it's goodbye. Matt. Matt. You've never told me about yourself, even where you're from. I'd like to know so that I, I can remember. It's a little town you never heard of in West Virginia. Its name is Meadville. Pause briefly from our story, The Most Enchanted, starring Marie McDonald, to bring you an important message from your government. Men, you just have to read your newspapers to see that the career of tomorrow is in the air. And here's how you young men can make your career in aviation. The U.S. Air Force Aviation Career Plan is your answer. When you finish your high school education, you're eligible. Take your high school diploma down to your local recruiting station. The men there will provide you with a list of aviation skills you can study in the Air Force. There are 40 of these skills, and you have your choice. Then, if you qualify, you enlist and are guaranteed the training you have chosen. If not accepted, you're not obligated in any way. So, high school graduates, why don't you just see for yourself what careers are open to you in the Air Force? Look over the complete list right away at your recruiting station. curtain rises on act two of The Most Enchanted, starring Marie McDonald as Gail Saunders. It is two weeks later, in front of the law offices of Mr. Matthew Carpenter, a long, sleek green roadster is parked outside. At the wheel sits Gail Saunders, waiting. In a few moments, Nat comes out of the office and starts toward the curb where his car is parked. Matt! Gail! Yeah. Gail, you've changed your mind. You did come, after all. Get in, Matt, and talk to me. Oh, darling. I was here in Meadville all the while. I'd even bought a house. He planned everything to work out just this way. Gail, are you trying to tell me... No, Matt, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm saying hello. Oh, darling. I'm doing wrong. I can't explain to you why, but promise me we'll never talk about right or wrong. We'll just go on living and loving each other. We'll pretend it's an enchantment, like you said that night. And you and I will be the most enchanted. Yes, Matt. You and I will be the most enchanted. Well, 
Yes, huh? Miss Saunders? She right here. New York on the wire, Miss Gale. New York? Oh, it must be Dr. Snyder. Thank you, Clara. Hello? Yes. Oh, yes, Doctor. Oh, oh I adore having you. I can't think of anything I'd like better. Thursday? Oh, perfect. I'll meet you at the train. Goodbye. Clara, we just have to have everything polished and shined and cleaned within an inch of perfection. We're going to have a special guest. Yes, sir. I reckon here come our regular special guest up on the porch now. Matt? Uh, Clara, I'll go to the door. Yes, sir. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. I'm terribly glad to see you. Aren't you a little early? Yes, I... Matt, there's something wrong. What is it, darling? Gail, there's something I never told you. It was a girl I knew, Helen Carville. We went together before, before I met you. Oh? We weren't engaged or anything, but, well, it was sort of understood. There was no one I liked any better and no one she liked any better. Our, our families knew each other. Well, you know, one of those things. Yes, go on. Well, she's been away in California. I got a wire that she's coming in tonight. She asked me to meet the train. But, but of course. You must meet it, Matt. It's only right. I've got to tell her about us, sir. I sort of hate to do it the first night. Have you known her for a long time? All my life. But I never loved Helen the way I love you. We, but we were good friends. It was just sort of taken for granted that someday we'd marry. And, well, that's all there was to it. Then I met you. I see, Matt. Matt, promise me this. Go to the train. Meet her just as you would have done if, if you'd never known me. After all, she's been away a long time. Maybe you might feel differently seeing her again. You've got to be sure, Matt, for my sake. I've already made up my mind about this, Gail. I've got to tell her right away, tonight. No, not tonight. Wait a few days. Gail, you do love me beyond all doubt. Yes, Matt, beyond all doubt. <laughs> It's nice of you, Gail, to take an old man around and show him the scenes of his childhood. You see, John, I feel like Meadville is my home, too. Oh, it's beautiful out here on the point, isn't it? Yes, and I may say you're beautiful, too, Gail. More beautiful than I've ever seen you. And happy. Very happy. Gail, it isn't all because of Meadville, is it? There's something else? Someone else? Oh, I knew you'd guess. I suppose everyone in love shows it to their friends. I know it's wrong of me, but I've had so little happiness. I told him goodbye that night at the dance. I never intended to see him again. Then, then I found this was his home. Oh, oh, this is if fate had thrown us together. You'd have done the same as I did. The carpenter boy? Yes. Who well, am I to say you're doing wrong or right? You're not hurting anyone else? I suppose everybody has a right to happiness, even if it's only a moment. I'd like to think that... <laughs> Yeah. You remember when we used to come out here when we were kids and go swimming? <laughs> yeah. And, and Helen, you, you remember the time I almost drowned you? Oh. I forgot what it was you did, but I was mad as a dickens at you, and I held your head under the water <laughs> until you stopped kicking. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'd never forgotten how scared I was. Then. We'd better go in, Gail. Shh. I, I don't want them to see us. <laughs> yeah. Wait till they're gone. I think I wouldn't have minded dying even then. If you were near me. Oh, Matt, it's been awful being away from you. I never knew how much I loved you until we were separated. It'll take a whole lifetime of loving you to, to make up for those six months. Helen, Helen, there's something I've got to say to you. Matt, is anything wrong? You've been trying to tell me something ever since I first came home. Oh, please, Helen, you, you must listen to me. I can't. I think we'd better go back now, Dr. Snyder. It's really getting quite chilly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was here. Why, Mr. Carpenter, hello. Uh, how do you do? You remember Dr. Snyder, Mr. Carpenter? Yes, uh, Miss Carver, Miss Saunders, and Dr. Snyder. How do you do? Not Gail Saunders. Oh, yes, I'm afraid I have to confess. Oh, how wonderful. Matt, why didn't you tell me that you knew her? Well, every time I go to New York, I always go to your place. That's very nice <laughs> of you. Won't you join the doctor and me for a drink at the house? It's still early. Uh, no, no, I, I think we better oh, not. Oh, Matt, please, I'd love to. I've never met a real honest-to-goodness star before. You don't mind my saying that, do you? Oh, I don't at all, and you certainly shall come. 
We won't pay any attention to Mr. Carpenter's objections. We'll let him discuss clients with Dr. Snyder. And Helen, you and I will talk about the theater. <laughs> I think that's the funniest story I almost ever heard. <laughs> Don't you think it was funny, Matt? Yeah, very funny. <laughs> oh, but that's life in the theater for you. And that's theater people. There's nothing very sincere about us. All our emotions are so facile. We shed them with the fall of the curtain. Yes, it's all very glamorous. But I think I shouldn't be happy living like that. I wouldn't fit in. If I loved a man, I'd... I'd love him till I died. I just couldn't help it. <laughs> really? You mean even when he sulked or the bills weren't paid? Even after the endless monotony of the breakfast table? Yes, even then. Oh, I couldn't stand it. Love should be romantic and transit as a summer breeze. And gone and forgotten just as quickly. Another cigarette, please, Johnny. Sure again. Here, I have got a match. Thank you. Gail, I've got to talk to you tonight. Uh, perhaps Sir Helen would like a cigarette, Mr. Carpenter. Gail. No. You know, Helen, it's terrible, but everything and everyone bores me in time. It's like this adorable little town of yours. I came here fully expecting to end my days here. It was all going to be so lovely and rural... And quite suddenly, I realize I can't stand it another minute. You, you can't seriously mean that. Mean it? My dear man, of course I mean it. I woke up this morning and knew if I looked out over that view from my front window again, I'd scream. And the people bore me in the life. There's nothing to do here. Oh, no, I couldn't stand it. I'm going back to New York tomorrow with Dr. Snyder. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Mad, what on earth's the matter with you? Oh, he's very proud of Meadville. I'm afraid I'm upsetting him. Don't let it upset you, Mr. Carpenter. I assure you that anything I may think or say about Meadville is not worth remembering. No, I'm going back to the stage. I've only one love, really. That's the theater. Just when did you make up your mind? Oh, yesterday. I suddenly realized there wasn't anything for me here anymore. Can you understand that, Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Yes, I understand very well. Helena, I think we better be going. Oh, yes, of course. Well, if Matt and I come to New York, may we look you up? Do, please. I shall probably be giving another farewell performance. <laughs> like Bernhardt, I'll go on and on. <laughs> Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye, Gail. Both of you. Well, goodbye, Dr. Snyder. It's been so charming. Yes, hasn't it? Thanks for a lovely performance, Miss Saunders. Matt. That was awfully well done, don't you think, Dr. Snyder? That was the third act of one of the first plays I ever did. A very bad play, too. Gail, get hold of yourself. It will take a whole lifetime of loving you to make up the six months. Oh, she can give him a lifetime. And I... Oh, John, did you see his eyes when he left? I've heard him. But I'd have heard him more if I'd gone on. Yes, Gail, I think you would. But he'll turn to her. She loves him. She'll make him happy. <laughs> I would have made him happy, too. I know I would. But I'd have only given him such a little time and left him nothing but bitterness and pain. And she'd have been gone from him then. Oh, I did right. I know it. But his eyes, John, his eyes, the way he looked at me when he left. I know. Give me a cigarette, Doctor. You know, I don't count them anymore. And now I won't mind how few are left. But I've had one thing. For a little while, I had my dream. For a little while, I was one of the most enchanted. curtain falls in the final act of The Most Enchanted. Our star, Marie McDonald, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Young man, here's your chance to choose what you want in the regular army. If you're a high school graduate, you have your choice of 60 different skills or trades to study. Once accepted for enlistment, you're guaranteed training at the Army Technical School you have selected. Yes, high school graduates, this plan, the Army Technical School Plan, allows you to choose. For instance, at the engineer school, you can learn drafting or electricity. At the ordnance school, you can learn sheet metal work or the maintenance of such things as telescopes and binoculars. 
At the signal school, you might study telephone and telegraph repair and maintenance, or radio operation. And there are many more. Your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station will be glad to give you all the details at no obligation. Stop by at your first opportunity. Now back at the microphone, our star, Marie McDonald, and our producer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have long wanted Marie McDonald to do a dramatic play. Now you've heard the results, and this is the moment to express sincere appreciations to her. And my moment, C.P., to say that I enjoyed every minute of it. I'm glad you did. And do you know what I was thinking about during the play, Marie? No. I was thinking that you had come a long way in a very short time, from the days when you sang with Charlie Burnett, Johnny Long, and... Tommy Dorsey. That you kept pace with Things Music, your ranch in Encino. Uh-oh, you're not going to tease me about my ambition to raise a great thoroughbred, are you? <laughs> yes, and to win the Kentucky Derby. Well, there always has to be a winner, you know. Maybe it will be my horse. I hope so. And then I was thinking about the new study you were taking up. About character and the difference in people. Characterology. You take the eyes, the profile, lips, hands, nose, shape of the head, the ears. Turn around, C.P. Here, let me see your ears. Now, wait a minute. You want to know how to understand people, don't you? Well... Do you know how to choose your associates, scientifically? No, but this isn't the place for... You want to avoid disappointments. I know, but this isn't the... Now, hold still. Mm, physiognomy, that's physical indication. Now, look, Marie. Hold still. Mm, pathognomy. Is that bad? Oh, Mr. McGregor. Now, McGree, the, this isn't the place for anything. You have a characterological disarticulated head. That means you're a square for knowledge. <laughs> oh, is that all? <laughs> no. I also discovered that you're a very gracious host. <laughs> Now, before we get away, Marie, I've got something to tell you. Really, C.P.? Next week, Marie, and ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to present that popular actor, MacDonald Carey, in a romantic play titled The Faraway Acres. This is a period drama in which our star rises from a Connecticut farm foreman to a bonanza mine partner during the famed California gold rush. His romance becomes a story only when it is punctuated with gold nuggets. Oh, that'll be grand. I'll be listening for sure. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Marie. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you McDonald Carey and the Faraway Acres. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Marie McDonald appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Orchestra is under the direction of Eddie Scrivana. This program is rebroadcast to the armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, proudly we hail, next time presents McDonald Carey. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.